averages today. They finished the day mixed, but the bull market became the longest on record as our economy continues to soar. And President Trump awards the military's highest honor to the family of a fallen hero. We're going to have much more on that in a bit. But first, I want to get back to this record-setting day. We are now officially in the longest-running bull market in U.S. trading history. Today marks 3,454 days of uninterrupted gains without a 20% pullback in the S&P 500. But with the market in rally mode and consumers extraordinarily confident, a lot of people are asking several questions. Can the economy remain this hot? Maybe another question, can it even get hotter? And finally, what will it take to get more Americans involved in the stock market? Here now to discuss Melissa Armo, the stock swoosh, uh, Glenn Hall, chief editor of Dow Jones Newswires, David Nelson, chief strategist for Bell Point Asset Management, and Paul Dietrich, he is the CEO of Fairfax Global Markets. All right, Melissa, let me start with you first and foremost. This market rally, we know it's late summer, we know volumes are thin, uh, but the bias is obviously to the upside and it's reacting to good news. How do you think it goes from here? You were talking about something happening in the summertime. Yeah, the end of the summer. and I'm very excited because the S&P finally, finally made a brand new all-time high. I think it was yesterday. So that's a good sign. And even though we were down a little bit in the pre-market this morning, we held. We held up pretty good. I see us going into a period where we possibly could break out, whether it's the fall of 2018 or early 2019. The market is setting up because we rested for eight months. But if we start making higher. new highs, won't there, won't there be a sense of urgency for particularly money managers to get involved in this market? Yeah, that's going to push the market higher. That's exactly the point because it is institutions that move the money move the market higher it's big money hedge funds banks institutions they're in the market now I can see that they're in reading the price action again I look at the technicals and I'm telling you it's going to come and it's going to lift us all up well the fundamentals are phenomenal particularly for the US consumer and by the way folks after the bell William Sonoma posted their earnings remarkable numbers once again uh, the uh, same store sales are up 4.6% their e-commerce business up 54%. Pottery Barmers up 2%. West Elm up almost 10%. Williams Sonoma, the store itself up 2%. And Pottery Barn Kids also up almost 6%. Glenn, the American consumer is powering this. There's a new sense, I think, of confidence. And the irony here is that the, those big wage gains haven't occurred yet. That's right, but we're starting to see that come into the economy. We've got this unemployment rate that's historically low. I think uh, the consumer has reason to feel confident. The Fed is feeling confident. They think they can raise rates in this moment. So all of that adds up to fundamentals being strong. And if you look at the corporate earnings as well, just the S&P alone, almost all the companies have reported averages about 25% gain in earnings. The earnings have been so remarkable, uh, David, back-to-back -back quarters. Uh, the, 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 in the first quarter, in fact, the earnings, we thought they peaked, right? The CFO of Caterpillar yeah. talked about a high watermark. <laughs> I remember that. She sent the market reeling. Uh, but we've had back-to-back -back quarters, and now the guessing game on Wall Street is, is this as good as it gets? 25% year-on-year growth, that's obviously not sustainable, but certainly 10%, <laughs> <laughs> we don't like that. But look, we're, we're coming on the heels of, of a tax cut, and the news is pretty good, and the data really supports a, 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 mar a market here. Unfortunately, too many retail investors are going to use today's, you know, event as a reason to sell. And, you know, unfortunately, that that's the data doesn't support that. I look around the world, we're the best came in town. You know, if somebody calls you up and says, put money in emerging markets because they're a lot cheaper than the United States, hang up the phone, all right? <laughs> Right. We have the rule of law in this country. You're not going to wake up in the morning and find, you know, your currency devalued or worse, uh, you know, uh, an industry nationalized. You know, Paul, I talked about the consumer. And if you look at, for instance, these retail stocks and the ones that hit 52 week highs today, Best Buy, American Eagle, uh, Costco, Dollar General, Five Below, TJ Maxx. That covers every income bracket in America right there. So it's not just one group of Americans. And the reason I bring that up is, you know, this whole political debate on who benefits from lower regulations, who benefits from lower taxes. Those names we just put up suggest that maybe we all do. Well, I, I agree with you. And you mentioned about wage gains. But the where this money is coming from, from... Uh, from the consumers is that since March 9th of 2009, the beginning of this bull market, uh, the stock market has created $18 trillion in wealth for the 52% of Americans directly or indirectly who are in the stock market. The S&P is up 323%. You think about that on an annualized basis for less than 10 years nine years and something. 
that's phenomenal. That's where the wealth is coming from. That's where the money is coming from. And it's not just consumers. Corporations are spending, too. I mean, we're at, at record capital expenditures. And I think it's because of the stock market and because of the tax cuts. Uh, that's really been fueling right. Right. Uh, and, this, this movement. And I'm glad you brought up the business spending because uh, I know ISM, uh, when they did their forecast in December and then they did it again in May, significant jump, 250% jump for manufacturing. Those are long-term investments, so it's not a fly-by-night thing. But, Melissa, uh, Paul also brought up the, this move, right? The, since the March 9th low, 2009, S&P 500 up more than 300%. Since that same period, uh, four-year college tuition and private schools up 20%, public up 24%, a new car costs you 20% more, and, and the median home price up 47%. 325% covers all of that, right? What will it take to get the average investor to say, this is my road to freedom. This is what's going to allow me to change either the course of my life or perhaps the course of my children's life. Right, well, people don't invest money or spend money at these retail places like Pottery Barn and Williams Sonoma unless they are making more money or feel better about their lives and their but future. But why don't they walk out the store and say I should be part owner of that thing because they just had a $2,000 waffle iron and I bought it. <laughs> right, because people are in general, and I'm generalizing here, people in general want to take the safe route. So people are adverse to risk. And because of what happened, people are always late to the game. People are late to the party. So I think people are going to get in this market, but it may not be right now. It may not be 2019. It may not be to 2020. And that's why, and just listen here, listen to what I'm saying. This is very important. I think the market continues because you're going to have people get in late. You're going to have the institutions buying sure, in. Sure. They're going to push it over the high. They're going to move it up. The S&P is going to go up over 30,000. And then you're going to say, people are going to look around and say, now we'll oh go 35 to 30,000? I'm not saying that. I said the S&P. Okay. 3,000. Or 3,000. 3, I'm sorry. Yeah, 3,000. 300, 300 in the SPY. 3,000. I always I got you. I got yeah, you. Yeah. yeah. Well, let me bring, let me bring in, in David then. Do you agree with that notion uh, 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 that it will take like the, uh, the I don't know, the sort of tulip mania yeah. scenario <laughs> for the average, uh, for people who are not in this market? To I think the fact that, that the, a lot of retail investors aren't in the market, that's probably good for us. You know, that's probably good for the mar market as a whole. And I think it speaks to what's happening. You, you brought up retail. You know, I brought, wrote down something that the, the CEO of Target said. He said this is the healthiest environment he's ever seen in, ever. in his career. And 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 he's, this guy's been in, in, in retail. By the way, I think the retail time. retail shopper is even smarter because when you look at Target's numbers, their their debit card transactions grow at a faster rate than even credit cards. But Glenn, uh, so we got the consumer two thirds of the economy. Paul brought up corporations. That sometimes is the difference maker. Do you think that they'll continue to, to because after the close, Nordstrom said, hey, we're going to buy back one and a half billion dollars worth of our stock. We also want to see them build more stores and build more uh, warehouses and things like that. There's a lot going on that is inspiring that spending, right? And a part of it's the tax uh, cuts and then that money that was generated. Uh, but part of it is also they were holding back for so long that there's an investment that's needed in order to build and, and boom and take advantage of what's happening. So some the, of this was pent up. And there's also no incentive to hold the money that's overseas right. anymore. Now you bring it back here and invest it in the Great economy point. here. So the people that are going to Target right now, think who goes there. It's not George Clooney. It's, it's not people. Nancy Pelosi. Yeah. It's, it's really the everyday American who's really benefiting from that's this. That's right. Target, you can't beat it. All right, <laughs> and folks. Lowe's too. Lowe's was up today too, that's and right. that's a store that regular people shop at. I know. Yeah. I know. My wife knows everyone there. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all very much. Well, in spite of the economy going strong, more and more Americans are abandoning their belief in capitalism. In fact, some are running to the arms of socialism. That's right. Socialism still getting a whole lot of positive press. We're going to talk about a cautionary tale next.